Hey everyone, Christina here for Card Player TV for another edition of Strategy. I've got Tom Schneider here to talk about Chinese poker. Thanks so much for coming. You're welcome. Let's start. All right. Let's get going. All right. So, when dealing a Chinese poker hand, is there a proper way to do it? Yeah, I'll show you. Typically, what's that, what happens? Even if you're playing just two-handed, you just deal it this way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I have friends who start going like this. And they remember how many, that's their <laughs> own little thing that they do. All mm -hmm. right, so that's the same number of cards in each spot. Mm -hmm. When we're on the plane, all right, we play a lot of Chinese on the plane. Mm -hmm. Make sure you shuffle them real well and you do it this way. Because there's no place to put it on the plane. That's your, that's okay. your, that's so your so, hand. Okay, okay so it's Okay, then I count really out matter. 13 and that's my hand. Okay. So that way, that way, you know, like when you're in a plane, cards are flying everywhere. Yeah. So there's different ways of doing it. When my wife and I play, we deal three, three, Three. So whatever everybody is happy with. Okay. okay. So then what you do is is when you're playing heads up typically, you have you have let's say four hands sitting here that you've just dealt out. Mm -hmm. I give you the first one, I take the second one, you get the third one, I get the fourth one. Okay? Okay. And then next time you're gonna deal and it's gonna be the exact opposite. Okay. okay. So you're sitting there and hopefully when you're playing in a casino the dealer is dealing out while you're while you're playing so then they're, they're all they have to do is they rotate the button mm -hmm. there is a button in Chinese poker the only thing that the button does in Chinese poker is it tells you who's gonna get the first hand okay? okay and then they rotate the button and now this person gets the first hand next time this person gets the first hand and they just go from there so that's kinda how it's dealt it's kind of important because sometimes you know obviously which hand you get determines on whether you're gonna win or lose sometimes okay uh, obviously so uh, people so are very particular up. about the button mm -hmm. you know when they're playing so anyway, that's that's the first part of Chinese poker. That's how how it's dealt. Okay. okay. Well, let's deal out a hand and let's. All right. I I I know the rules on how to play. I don't think I play optimally though. So okay. so we're gonna we're gonna see. Now, there's lots of different ways to play, but the most common is is the best hand in the back, best five cards, then right. best five cards, and best three cards. Is that right. right? That's correct. Obviously with the back hand being the strongest hand, mm -hmm. not the very strongest you can make, but has to be has to be a better hand than the middle hand. The middle hand has to be a better hand than the top three cards. Okay, now what is it called when you mess up and the back hand isn't as strong as the middle hand? That's called a fouled hand. Okay. But a lot of times in, in, in Chinese poker, if you're playing with friends or reasonable people, they, you know, if it's, if it's simply just a matter of taking your hand and switching it like this, mm -hmm. where you had a full house and a flush and you've just put them in the wrong order, I've never seen it where they call that a fouled hand. They okay. just switch those two. Okay. But sometimes they'll set it up such that they, they thought they had a full house, but they, instead of their pair of fives that were the part of the full house, they'd have a five here and a five here in their flush, and they, oops, all they have to do is move the five to get the full house and they still mm -hmm. have a flush. Then that's called gentleman's rules, and they'll most most play, players play that way. So they'll allow you to just move the hand, okay. And in some cases, they'll just say if it's a foul hand, you lose the maximum. Oh, okay. Okay, but most players that I play with say you play gentleman's rules. It's obvious what you're trying to do, and so therefore you can move it around. Okay. All right, I'm gonna set mine up. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what she's got here. <laughs> How much are we playing for? Um, well, a billion just, dollars a point. You just saw your hand. Uh oh, you've got a big hand. No. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what I do. Oh. Just as you're setting that up, I'm going to give you an example of, of what I do, and you can keep filming that. Okay. But typically, what I'll do is I'll look, I look for flushes first. Okay. Flushes, the great thing about flushes is, especially if you have a six card flush, like I do here, it provides you opportunities to make straights and things like that by pulling one of the cards out. Okay. okay. So, for instance, in this case, if I had a five or a nine here, I could make a straight, mm -hmm. all right, with my jack ten eight seven or my three four uh, six seven eight. But unfortunately, I don't. So now I'm I'm kind of screwed there. So then what I'll do is I'll, I I try to figure out what is my hand that I can make right now by playing a flush. So all right, the hand that I can make by playing a flush, probably the best hand by playing a flush, is a flush with a pair of tens. Mm -hmm. That's a really bad hand. So now what I'm going to do is say, okay, I can see that I have a bunch of pairs here, okay? I've got, I've got sevens, I've got threes, I've got fours, I've got tens. So I'm going to see how many pairs I have. And there's a standard way to play it, hands like five pair hands and four pair hands. So you really don't have to do a lot of thinking if you have a five pair hand. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to see if I have a five pair hand. And it doesn't look like I do. I've got a four pair hand, okay? So a four pair hand, typically what you're going to do, especially if you have a thing like an ace, king, and a jack, 
Mm -hmm. A lot of times is you're going to play, you have to play the highest hand in the back, so I'm going to play tens and threes. Okay. And I'm going to play my worst kicker in the back. Your worst kicker, if you have four pair, always goes in the back because it's least likely to matter. Okay. Okay? Uh -huh. So I'm going to play tens and threes in the back. Now I'm going to play fours and sevens with, once again, my worst card, giving me ace, king, jack up top. Okay. Okay? Now let's say that I had a five pair hand. I'm going to steal a, ja a king out of here. The five pair hand is played almost exactly like the four pair hand, except for you're going to put your top pair, uh, your top pair always goes up top in a five pair hand. Okay. Okay? And then you put your second highest pair in the back with your lowest pair. Okay. Okay? Because it has to be higher. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to get your biggest pair up top. So you don't get scooped. Right. Because exactly. that's really bad. Exactly. Scooped is really bad. Okay. So anyway, that's kind of how a five pair hand is. Now, so first thing to do is sort it out and look at flushes and straights, mm -hmm. okay, and then uh, look at pairs. So then, what I like a good Chinese player, if if you're not very experienced, like a lot of times I can look at a hand when it's all messed up and go, okay, this is how I'm setting it. Mm -hmm. But it's always good if you have a lot of combinations to reset your hand, sort it out with flushes, then sort it out with pairs, then sort it out with straights, and look at all the combinations. It's incredible sometimes how much you can miss if you don't do that. Okay. All right, that's really good advice. And I think um, I have a really bad hand. That's what I think. Okay. So, um... Let's put it on the table and okay. see. We'll, we'll this, sort it out. This is what I think I'm supposed to do, but okay. I'm not really sure. All right, this is what you've done. You put ace-jack-10 up top. Uh-huh. pair of fives in the middle. You have a horrible hand so far. And a flush in back. Very nice. Okay, so what else do you have? That's... You, it looks I like had you a have, pair of aces. Right, you mm -hmm. have a pair of aces. All right. You also have... A straight, all right. Mm -hmm. And this is what's really important right here, is to look at your hand from all different ways. All right. All right. So maybe should I have played the straight in the back, the aces and fives in the middle? Yeah, it looks like. It looks like I would probably. Um, this is this is one of those that's pretty close, I think. Mm -hmm. And I would probably play the uh, king high straight and the aces. Oh, wait a minute, you got the what was your flush? Your flush. Was ace high. It was an ace high flush, mm -hmm. which is a good flush. Okay. Okay. And then you have a pair of fives and, and an ace high. Mm -hmm. I probably would play the straight, the aces, and the two fives. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. So how does scoring go? How does scoring go? How? So right. let's say I um. You I beat me. Let's let's do this. All right. We you have uh, you have uh, three hands. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. just say this is your hand, even though that's not how it would be set up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have. Three cards up top, and this, and this. Okay. okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare my top hand to your hand. Okay. If I beat you, I get a point. Okay. Okay. I'm going to compare my middle hand to your middle hand. If I beat you, I get another point. Okay. I'm going to compare my backhand to your backhand. If I beat you, I get another point. So, if I get three points, I also get one for the match for be getting more points in, than you in the match. So, I would get one, two, three, plus the match would be four points. Okay. okay? Now. Let's say there's really only a few combinations of things that can happen here. I can beat you in, in the front and in the middle, and you can beat me in the back. And then I would win one, two, minus one, but then I win the match, so plus one, so I, I'm plus two. Okay. So generally, in Chinese poker, unless there are ties, which I'll explain that, you're either going to win two or four, or lose two or four. Okay. okay? That's without royalties. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just say that both of us had ace, king, queen up top, and then... I beat you in one spot and you beat me in one spot. Well, since we tied in one spot and you beat me in one spot and I beat you in one spot, it's going to be a complete wash because I win one, you lose one, and we tied. Okay. So nobody gets, the, nobody gets the points. But if we tie in one spot and I beat you in two spots, then I'm going to get three points. I'm going to get one for this win, one for this win, nothing for that, uh -huh. and then one for the, one for the, uh, for the match. So okay. I get three. Okay. All right. Uh, when you play Chinese poker, what do you usually play per point? Uh, usually up here like a hundred a point. Okay, cool. Um, well, this is all very good, and there's a lot more things that we want to talk about, okay. like the royalties, and also playing deuce to seven in the middle because I heard that's very common. Right. Um, so how about we talk about for part two of Chinese poker? Okay. Chris Yarnett with Tom Schneider for Carpenter TV.